Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Chubb BitSite Cyber Services webinar hosted by Stuckey & Company. My name is Tyler Bechtold, the Business Development Representative here at Stuckey. And uh, first off, I would like to thank, um, thank everyone for joining us today and for your time this Wednesday afternoon. It does appear we have a great turnout today, which is excellent. So before we get started, um, I just wanted to go through a few things while uh, some of the attendees are still logging on to the webinar. First, if you'd like to ask a question, um, please find the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, please ask any questions, and we'll most certainly do our best to get to your questions uh, during the webinar and also after the webinar today. Um, next, I would like to thank Maggie Hammett, our lead technology underwriter here at Stuckey, uh, for joining us, along with Julia Grunwald, the uh, insurance solution manager at BitSight. Uh, thank you both for presenting and uh, making yourselves available for any questions um, and in regards to the BitSight availability and advantages of uh, the BitSight program along with the Safety Tech program. So all right, um, so a little bit of background about Stuckey and Company. Bef um, we, we are an MGA and we're also a national wholesale broker and we provide our insurance agents with, and brokers with innovative insurance programs along with excellent service, uh, which they need to ensure long-term growth and success. As of today, Stuckey has nine specialty programs that we offer to our licensed agents. This year, we have completed 28 successful years in the business. We are also family owned um, with one location and have remained dedicated to our growing agency network uh, while serving over 9,000 licensed independent insurance agents in the continental US and over 200,000 customers. Um, and then by providing excellent service standards um, from our unmatched 151 promise. At Stuckey, we do everything from creating niche specialty insurance programs for our agents, and we manage all areas of the insurance cycle for our agents and their clients' accounts, um, including underwriting, reading, rating and rule generation, uh, program placement, of course, um, the quoting, the binding, the issue and the policies. Uh, we have uh, policy services such as processing endorsements and change requests. Um, we can issue certificates of insurance for your clients. Uh, we also handle the renewal issuance, um, the invoicing and billing, reporting, and we also do some systems integrations, um, claims handling, marketing, and free product and insurance training, such as this webinar today. So by partnering with Stuckey & Company, we provide our agents with turnkey access to over 60 solid national A-rated insurance carriers in the industry. In addition, we assign our agents to a single point of contact for your agency business. Um, and as a business development team, um, including myself, um, we, you know, we do everything here to um, help support your agency's business um, um, throughout the day and can contact us at any time for assistance. Um, we also have access for, for our agents to, um, for personal commercial to several raters. Um, and also options to subcode your, our agents to help provide easy, quick access to quoting, binding, and other policy services. We have some integration platforms um, and also APIs available. We have uh, specialty programs, obviously, that are exclusive for our agents, um, which is our niche, um, you know, different, different types of industries that we specialize in here at Stuckey & Company. Um, we also have, uh, we provide consolidations or what we like to call quoting blocks, which are benefits that, um, you know, to help our agents with strategic growth um, with several incentives, including commission incentives, um, basically book roles and um, other consolidations as well. We also have a lead program um, and marketing campaigns available for our agents. And lastly, again, we provide a lot of free insurance educational training for our agents to become familiar with our products um, and other specialty programs that we offer here at Stuckey & Company. So here's a list of eight of our specialty programs that we offer to our agents. First, we have Safety Tech, um, our technology E&O insurance program. 
um, which now this includes a uh, business owner's policy as well outside of the E&O. Um, this program started over 20 years ago and it's mainly technology IT related uh, type program um, which includes broader coverage with low minimum premiums and is very competitively priced um, even with some of the most complex type services in the technology industry. Uh, next we have Aspire A&E for architects and engineers. Uh, Harbor Guard, which is Stucky's first program, started 28 years ago, which handles marinas and boat dealers. We have our miscellaneous professional liability program, which consists of over 320, I believe it's over 320 eligible um, classes in miscellaneous professional liability or MPL. We have Element for the green energy industry. Then, of course, we have our personal lines, which includes uh, all policy types and markets available for um, you know, homeowners, personal auto, watercraft, high value home, and more. And then we have our commercial lines markets, which include BOP. Um, we write a lot of business owners policies along with workers comp, commercial auto, uh, bonds. We can write bonds as well, um, just to name a few. And last, we have our uh, non-standard, our surplus lines carriers um, available as well for any risk that falls outside of our uh, admitted carriers underwriting guidelines. All right, so now um, I'd like to pass the presentation over to Julia, and she would like to go into further detail um, of the availability and the advantages of BitSight. So I'll pass it over to you, Julia. Let's see here. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, no problem. I can, yeah. And I can hear you nice, loud and clear. Thank you so much. Perfect, absolutely. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Today I just want to go over the BitSite security rating solution a little bit and talk about how um, you can use security ratings, how your clients can use security ratings to get a better understanding of their own security, their own network security. Um, so today we'll go through an overview of BitSite security ratings. Then I'll actually go into a live demo of what our enterprise clients can see about their own organization. And then we'll talk about how clients can access and view their BitSite report and a few of the um, agreements that we have with Chubb around this. And we'll definitely have time for questions at the end, so feel free to enter any questions that you have into the GoToMeeting panel, and we'll go over those after the presentation. All right, so to give you a quick overview, for anyone who's not familiar with BitSite or what we do, we generate security ratings for organizations based on how their network is being secured from what we can see externally. Now, what this means is that we collect information from outside a company's network. We don't install anything on their network. We don't need any hardware for them to purchase or maintain. Everything that we do is collected external from the organization. And we use that to generate this three-digit rating um, that indicates their performance. And this is all done through a SaaS platform, so they can log in, get real-time results of what we're seeing, and be able to understand how their performance has changed day to day. These ratings are updated daily, so they can see any changes based on activity that they've made or any new threats in the environment. So you notice that the rating scale was from 250 to 900, and that is modeled after a consumer credit rating system in the US, you know, you have your credit score that is on that same scale. And we wanted to model our ratings after the consumer credit rating system to give organizations a very quick idea of how a company was doing. So you can look at, say, an 800 on, you know, uh, a credit rating. You know that that person is credit worthy, that they've been paying their bills. Same thing in BitSight. You can look at an 800 and get an idea of how well they've been performing over the past year. So you can see different types of ratings markets. You know, we have financial that's existed for quite a while. More recently, some consumer credit, uh, not consumer, some consumer uh, rating systems like Yelp or TripAdvisor. You have uh, consumer credit ratings with, you know, TransUnion, Equifax, and those kind of organizations. And now BitSight and similar companies are doing cybersecurity ratings for organizations. So now to get to that rating, there's a lot that we have to do and a lot of data that we have to collect to generate that rating on a company. And this starts really with a huge amount of data collection. 
And what BitSight does is we collect a lot of our own data. We actually have a subsidiary who's a threat intelligence company based out of Portugal called Anubis Networks that collects a lot of security information. We also partner with a lot of firms and researchers who are collecting security information across the internet every day. So we process about uh, 80 billion events every day based on what we've observed from the internet. Then from there, what we do is we figure out what an organization's network looks like. So we do this infrastructure mapping where we figure out what URLs, what domains a company owns and operates, and also what IP addresses that organization uses so that we can get an idea of what their network footprint looks like on the internet. So then once we have those two types of data, we, we match them against each other and filter that data so that we can get 23 risk vectors about an organization. And these will show you things like if the organization has had any malware on their network, or if they have been sending spam from uh, mail servers, or if they have proper TLS and SSL configurations. So we'll, we'll be able to judge how the company is uh, securing their network in these 23 different categories. And then from there, we take the grades in those 23 categories and we calculate that overall security rating on the 250 to 900 scale. So what you end up with is this very simple rating that's easy to digest, but also all of this underlying data. And our customers have access to both the ratings and all of the data that goes into them so that they can understand and improve their security posture. Now, this rating is useful to get an indication of security risk, but it wouldn't be that helpful if we didn't have this benchmarked against anything. So what we've done is we've done a lot of studies. We've also worked with companies like AIR and others to really look at how these ratings are correlated to data breaches. And what we found is that there are a number of areas within our ratings and our overall ratings that show indications that companies uh, are more likely to be breached than other companies. And you can see here that we've determined that a company with a security rating that's below about a 500 is about five times more likely to experience a data breach than a company with a 700 or higher. Similarly, if you look at other areas of the, uh, the ratings reports, like their botnet or file sharing grades or their open port grades, you can see that those have about a two times more likely uh, breach indicator than companies that are doing very well in those areas. And every year we do an update of our rating algorithm and a lot of this research goes into that update. So we look at what risk vectors we're seeing breach correlation with and what areas uh, we're really seeing you know, stronger relationships and those will be weighted more heavily in our ratings algorithm. So we, we do this research regularly to try to make sure that we have the best possible algorithm. So now in a, a cybersecurity um, specific view here, there are kind of three reasons that clients would be using security ratings and three times that it makes sense to engage with them. And the first one is post bind. So immediately after binding a policy, uh, you can give access to the security ratings to clients so that they have visibility into how they're currently performing. So kind of like a bench line of how they're doing at the moment. And then they can also see areas that they might want to improve in um, and areas that you know, we're, we're seeing different issues. Then also after an event has occurred, it's useful for organizations to look at their ratings. So if they had a breach or downtime or anything that resulted in really a, a potential change in their security performance, um, they might want access to their report to see any alerting that we've identified or any changes that they can make to protect themselves going forward and also see what, you know, if there were any indications that they could have done um, more proactive engagement before the breach occurred. And then lastly, as in just an ongoing view into their security risk, if the organizations are looking at their report on a regular basis, if they have continuous monitoring, then they can potentially identify areas of concern before they become events. So that's really the main reason that we update our ratings daily 
is to alert clients of potential risks before they become larger issues. So I've talked a lot about what we do. I'm just going to go into our platform quickly so that we can go through a demo of what this looks like and what, um, what areas we actually assess for an organization. So if a client were to have access to BitSight, just going to refresh here. So we'll walk through this company called Sapirix, which is just a, a fake company that we use for demo purposes, but it gives you an idea of what a company can see about their own rating. So you'll see we have Sapirix here and their current security rating is a 530, which puts them into the basic category. That's our lowest category of ratings. And it shows that they've had pretty significant issues over the past year or so. So now if you look down, you can see this historical viewpoint of how Sapirix has been doing every day for the past year. And you'll notice that they've been pretty steady around this you know, 480 to 530 mark. They've had some increases and decreases. We'll call out the reasons behind them here so that they could get an indication of both how their security performance has been trending and the reasons for any drops or even any increases that we've seen over time. Now, they can also see those 23 risk vectors that I was referring to earlier. They can see how they're performing in each of these. So they can get a very granular view of why they're 530 at the moment and maybe areas that they can focus on if they'd like to prioritize their security spend or really just improve their overall posture. And you'll see here that we have compromised systems in the upper left corner. This is what we view as the most important area of the ratings. This is really um, where the majority of the overall rating comes from. And in this first area here, botnet infections, you can see that Sapirix has an F. And the grades are on a scale from A to F, just like in school. So if Sapirix was looking at this, they would be able to see that they've had one botnet infection this week, 36 over the past year, and they've lasted for an average of almost 10 days. And that's a really important metric that we look at because it shows if companies are identifying and reacting to problems very quickly, or if they have issues that are lingering on their network for a long period of time that they're either unaware of or unable to prioritize and mitigate quickly. Now they can actually get really granular here. So if they wanted to, if Superix's security team was looking at this report, they can go in here, see every infection that we've identified, get the IP address so they can figure out what office this was originating from. They can get the timestamps for when the infection was actually communicating out to the internet and more information about the type of botnet itself. And now through the, the program that we have with Chubb, which I'll, I'll go through a little bit more in a moment, they also get access to this forensics data which is really granular information about every type of event that we see. And this is, you know, it's, it's pretty security specific here, but you can see that they get a lot of network data. So a security person at Sapirix would be able to take our information, go through their logs and really identify what areas they, um, they needed to improve and, and what areas they needed to track down. And if they were monitoring their organization continuously, the first day that we saw an event, they would get a notification about that and then they could respond to the incident so that it didn't last, you know, the almost 10 days that their events were lasting in the past. So we'll also give them uh, remediation guidance and BitSight them ourselves, we don't provide security services, but we will show companies really where they should focus in on. So we'll identify different findings that we've seen for the organization and they have this nice grid here, and they can see that there are these 83 findings that we feel are the most critical at the moment. So if they wanted to quickly prioritize areas to fix, they can go in here, we give all of the data about these different areas that we feel are, are the most pressing, and we'll give details about specifically what the issue is so that they can go ahead and fix those as quickly as possible. And all of this data is available through the platform. They can download it. They can uh, even feed it into other systems that they have. We have API connectors. So it's really, they can use it in whatever way that they are normally used to ingesting security information. 
Um, so that's just a quick overview of kind of what they get as part of this. You can see it's very granular information. Um, and now we can go back to the slides here and talk about really how they can get that information, how you can enable them to see all of this data for themselves. So we have a program called Client Access, where we can set clients up with 14 days of access for, for free, that they can go in and look at their own security posture. All of that information that I just showed you, they'll have access to for those 14 days. And the way that you can uh, grant access to clients is by going to the Chubb Loss Mitigation for um, Cyber Policy Holders and go down to this Request Loss Mitigation tools here. From there, you'll see that we have this security benchmarking, and this is the BitSite service. So this is what um, they would have access to if you enabled the security benchmarking. Then all you would have to do is enter the contact information of the client that you would like to get this information, and then that will be passed to Chubb and ultimately to BitSite, who will allow um, access for 14 days to that information. Now, once the 14-day access is granted, they'll get a welcome email that gives information about BitSite security ratings, about um, what they'll be able to see once they log in, and also information about how to actually access the platform and set up a password. Once they log into BitSite, they'll see this training academy. So they'll be able to go through a, a walkthrough of how to use the ratings tool, what types of data that we have, how to download things, how to add other users within their company, all sorts of basic information that they would need. And then lastly, they actually have access to our entire um, support team and a dedicated customer success representative. So these are people who can walk through any issues that we're seeing. They can go through um, the network mapping that we've come up with for the organization to validate that that's correct and uh, complete. And um, they'll get on a 30-minute call with the client to go through any issues and kind of help with creating a prioritization strategy. So they really get a lot of data from us and also a lot of support from us as part of this relationship. Now, after those 14 days, um, clients can choose to continue to have access to the BitSite platform. And there are two ways to do that. Either they can go through Chubb, and Chubb actually has a really great deal set up where for about 3K, a customer can get access to their own data for this year um, without that forensics piece. So they won't see all of the really granular information about events, but it's still a really good package. And just for comparison, we typically charge about 15,000 for the same um, package to the normal market. So they get a really good deal by going through that Chubb uh, subscription process. Now they can also, if they wanted access to other parts of our platform that weren't strictly their own organization, for example, if they wanted that forensics data, or if they wanted to look at the ratings of their third parties, like their vendors or their subsidiaries, or any other organization that they had a business relationship with, then they could um, work with our sales team. Um, they can talk to their customer success representative who can put them in touch with a salesperson who can help them with either an extended proof of concept or to purchase any information that they're interested in through the platform. Um, all right, so those are the areas that I wanted to discuss today. I'd be more than happy to go over any questions that you do have. Um, if you want to type them into the GoToMeeting panel and we can go over those. Awesome. Let's see here. Well, thank you, Julie. I appreciate it very much. Um, definitely a lot of good information about the BitSite product, um, the advantages um, and all the solutions, you know, in regards to, you know, uh, security ratings and, you know, the changes needed to reduce, you know, to reduce cyber risk, um, you know, with the platform, especially for Chubb policyholders. So again, thank you, Julie. I appreciate it very much. We do have, let's see, um, we got some questions that are related to BitSite and some that are not. So let's get to the BitSite ones first. Um, the first question, I guess, is a very important question. Um, basically, it looks like they just want to confirm um, if the BitSite service is available for, obviously, it's available for Chubb policyholders, but 
um, if it's available for Safety Tech, um, our technology E&O product here at Stucky and Company. So Maggie, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great question. And yes, uh, to confirm, it is available to the Safety Tech technology E&O policyholders because it is written through Chubb. And we do have some cyber coverage on the safety tech form. So you can access this site through Chubb's website. And um, as Julie had showed us earlier, you would log on or go to Chubb's website and she gave you a, a, a screenshot. And when I send out a webinar follow-up after this, I will include that link. That way any of our safety tech policyholders can have access. And also if you have a uh, anyone with a Chubb policy, you can also have that link and provide them with that, but great question. Definitely available on the safety tech form. Awesome, great. All right, let's see here. Um, it, there is the a question about if, if the product's available in Louisiana. I assume, Maggie, that um, it's available in every state. Um, what, what states are we we're licensed in for the safety tech product? Yeah, absolutely, Chubb? Tyler. We are, yeah, I write in all 50 states except for Alaska and Hawaii, so it is available in Louisiana. Awesome. All right, here's another BitSight question. Uh, Julie, hopefully you can answer this one for us. Uh, does BitSight conduct any internal security scans at customer locations? That's a great question. Um, so we, we do not do any internal scans. Everything that we do is externally collected, um, and it's collected for every uh, site that a company has. So if an organization has, say, five locations, we would have data about externally visible information for all five of those locations. Okay, great, thank you. All right, I'm trying to see, how to skim through here and see which ones are bit site questions. I know we're kind of running out of time here. Um, let's see here. Well, we do have some questions. I know it's kind of unrelated to the bit site, but uh, some questions about, I know I mentioned some about our lead program um, for technology businesses and what exactly it is and the cost and everything. Um, I'll briefly discuss that. Um, it's definitely one important thing um, for one to get access to this BIS site, um, you know, after we write a policy through Safety Tech um, and Chubb. But uh, the, the LEAD program is basically um, uh, a micro, we call it our micro tard LEAD program. It's about, we can provide anywhere between 25 to 30 or whatever you desire, um, you know, uh, tech businesses um, at no cost. So. Basically, we're just wanting the opportunity for our agents to be a part of our safety tech program, our technology E&O you know, program. And uh, so for, for that reason, you know, Stucky and Company is investing in our agents and um, paying for the leads. And we basically just ask for our agents to promise to, uh, you know, to quote and to buy in business through our safety tech program. And um, but other than that, if you have any questions about these leads, uh, feel free to, to contact me at Tyler at Stucky.com and I'll most certainly provide more information. Um, let's see what else we have here. On, on a side note on that yeah. too, um, just to let, I know, you know, this is uh, put together with Chubb for the safety tech product, but we also do write other lines with Chubb. So if you do have a <clears throat> Chubb cyber form, um, you can have access to this as well. So again, we'll provide some of this information in our follow-up emails. And uh, Julie, if you don't mind, I'll throw in your contact information should they have any questions specific to this site, but I will reroute everyone to the, the Chubb website to enter in their policy information um, so that they can have access on their own. Yeah. Great, and yes, please include my contact information. Thank you. You bet. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm trying to see if you have any more. Um, some of them I can probably answer afterwards uh, after the webinar, but in regards to applications, um, that's another one you got here. Um, I'm not sure if that's me, the bit site application or, or uh, um, you know, new business applications for safety tech. Um, if, 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 you know, agents need an actual, you know, technology application, um, yeah, most, most certainly feel free to reach out to myself or Maggie and we can most certainly provide that. Um, we also have appetite guides, brochures, um, you know, as, as well, um, coverage highlights and um, frequent asked questions, you know, about our safety tech product as well. Um, but, uh, but other than that, um, I'll go ahead and answer the remaining questions after the webinar. But again, thank you, Julia, um, and also thank you, Maggie, uh, for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for also joining us. We had a great turn turnout today. Um, I know it's kind of a new thing here at Stucky with the bit site, so it looks like there's not too many questions. But uh, um, I'll answer the remaining ones outside of bit site um, 
after the webinar. But again, thank you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Julia. Thanks, everyone. Take care.